Let's talk about the equation of a circle. So the general form for the equation of the circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. Now, some of these variables are going to represent numbers like h, k, and r, and x and y are just going to be x and y. So r, you can probably guess, that represents the radius of your circle. h and k, though, might be a little bit less obvious. h, in this case, represents the distance your circle is shifting to the left or to the right, and k represents the distance your circle is shifting up or down. Let's do an example just to make this a little bit more clear. If I have x squared, so in other words, x minus 0 squared, so our h value is 0 for this one, just to keep it simple, plus y squared, so the k value is also 0, and I say that's equal to 4. What does this represent? Well, if we try to graph this, the first thing we have to determine is what our radius is equal to. So if you recall, this final term here on the right-hand side is equal to r squared. r squared is equal to 4. So if r squared is equal to 4, and I tell you to solve for r, you take the square root of both sides, and you get r is equal to 2, right? Because 2 squared is equal to 4. So what we're dealing with here is a radius of 2. So if I were to draw this circle on my Cartesian plane, x, y, this is a circle with a radius of 2, and because it hasn't moved to the left or right or up and down, it's just centered around the origin. So you go 2 to the right to 2, you can go up 2 to 2, go to the left to negative 2, go down to negative 2, right? So you can draw the radius going from the center to any of those, or just out to here, right? And that has a length of 2. And this is going to make your circle. So it goes like that, like that and comes full circle just like that. So this is a circle with a radius of 2. And we know that the x-intercepts are 2 and negative 2, and the y-intercepts are negative 2 and 2, because the radius starts in the middle, goes to the outside. Okay? Now, what if we have some h and k values? The last example didn't have any, but what if we have something like this? x minus 1 squared plus y minus 3 squared, and that's going to equal 9. Well, again, just like the last time, we want to determine what our radius is equal to. So your r squared is equal to 9, square root both sides, your radius is going to equal 3. So when we graph this on our plane, it's going to be a circle with a radius of 3, but we have to find where the center of the circle now is, right? So before it was at 0, 0 here, but now it's moving, right? It's moving because we have this h and this k value right here. So because this is x minus 1, that means that we're moving to the right 1. So instead of being at 0, it's over here at 1. y minus 3 means we're moving up to 3. So you're going to be up here at 3. So that is where the new center of the circle is. Now how do you draw the rest of the circle? Well, all you have to do is use the radius. So if this is where the middle of the circle is, the highest point will be 3 above that. So up here at 6, right? you go up 3 because that's your radius. And you do that for every direction. So to the right, You'd be over here. Where is that? Well, it's 3 to the right, so it's going to be at 4. Just like that. Your lowest point will be 3 below the middle, so right down here at 0. And then to the left, you go 3 units. You'll be right here at negative 2. Right? 3 to the left. Now you have your circle, and you can connect these dots together as neatly as possible. Do your best. Just like that. Mine's not perfectly to scale, but you get the idea, right? So this distance here is 3. This distance is 3, right? Because the radius should be the same everywhere. That's 3. That's 3. And if you go on a diagonal, like if I go to here, that's also 3, right? It's 3 from the middle to anywhere on the outside of the circle. Now, if you wanted to, you could find your y-intercepts, right? You set x to 0 and solve for y, and you should get two answers, and you can find out what those intercepts are. You expect this one here to be a little bit above 0, and this one over here to be a little bit below 6, right? So if you wish to do that, you absolutely can. You just set x to 0 and solve for y. So you would have 0 minus 1 squared plus 
y minus 3 squared equals 9. Uh, negative 1 squared is positive 1. Move it to the other side, that would be 9 minus 1, which is 8. Square root both sides, you get y minus 3 is equal to the square root of 8. Therefore, y is equal to the square root of 8 plus 3. And if you're wondering what the square root of 8 plus 3 is equal to just roughly, um, square root of 8 is like 2.82. If you add 3 to that, you get 5.83 5, 5 roughly, if you want to round your answer. So that's one answer, but there should be two, right? So that one's just below 6, like we said, but there should be one over here. Well, how come we only got one answer? Because when you square root a number, you don't just get the positive, you also get the negative. So square root of 8 is really plus or minus square root of 8, right? Because if you square root a number, its square root could be positive or negative. Because if you're squaring a positive number, you get the same answer you get when you square a negative number. So every number, if you take the square root, it actually has two answers. So this was 1. And then the other answer you get is if you use the negative of this. And if you do that, you get 0 0.0. 172 approximately right if you round your answer which like we said is a little bit bigger than zero so that point makes sense as well so this would be useful if you had to graph this on grid paper and you want to be very accurate and make sure that your y-intercepts were correct also you could be asked to solve for the y-intercepts right and you can do the same with the x-intercept although for this case it's fairly obvious where it is right because it's touching there at one so you know what the x-intercept is but if you want to find it do the same process set y to zero and solve for x Let's do another one. What if I have x plus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 16? Well, same idea. If this is 16, then that means the radius is equal to 4, right? Because this is r squared, right? 4 squared is 16, so your radius is 4. Uh, where is the center of the circle? Well, plus 4 here means we move 4 to the left, and this minus 2 means we move up 2. So if you're thinking about it, it means we're in this top left quadrant over here because we moved to the left, negative 4, and we moved up 2. So this is where the center of your circle is. Okay, so now if you go 4 in each direction, 4 to the right will get you to here. 4 to the left will get you to here. That's going to be at negative 8, right? And this point here is at 0. If you go up 4 from 2, you're going to get up here. I'll continue this a little bit. Up there to 6, right? 2 plus 4 is 6. If you go down 4, you're going to be down here at negative 2, right? Because your height here is 2, you go down 4 to negative 2. So again, it's not perfectly to scale, but you do that in each direction. You connect those points as best you can. My circle's looking a little bit funny, right? But that's okay. That's what your circle's going to look like. So it just touches here. That's your y-intercept of 2. And then you're going to have your two x-intercepts here and here. You could solve for those if you wish. Let's do another one. Um, what if you're told that the radius is equal to 2 and your center is at the point 3, 0? That's the center of the circle. And you're asked to write the equation. Well, what are we talking about here? You can do a little sketch if that helps you out. So the center is at 3, 0. So you go 3, 0. That's going to be right here at 3. Radius is 2. So you go 2 in each direction. So you come over here to 5, over here to 1. You go up here to 2, and go down here to negative 2, just like that. And then you connect all these together. You get a nice little, little circle like that. So that's what we're talking about. Now, you don't have to graph this unless they ask you to, of course. But let's say they're just asking you to find the equation. What would you say? Well, we put x minus h, where h is the amount we move left or right. We move 3 to the right, so I'm going to put x minus my h, which in this case is going to be 3, because we move 3 to the right, so I put minus 3. It's always the opposite, right, of what you think. You'd think plus 3 because we go to the right, but it's minus 3. Okay, and that's being squared. Uh, and then we're just going to say plus y squared because, look, we don't move up or down, right? This is still this is still 0, the y value, right? We haven't moved the circle up or down, so it's still y squared. And then we have to put our r squared. Well, the radius is 2. Square that, you get 4. So this is the equation of the circle here being described. Let's do one more. Um, let's say we're told that the center of the circle is located at 
um, let's say it's negative 1, 1. And we're going to be told that the radius is equal to 3. So again, um, you don't even have to sketch this out, right? You can say, okay, x, and then how far did it move to the left or right? Well, it moved 1 to the left, right, because the x value is negative 1. So I'm going to put x plus 1 squared. I add my y, and then it moved up 1, right? So I'm going to put y minus 1 squared equals my radius squared. Well, my radius is 3, so you square that and you get 9. And so this is the equation of the circle that is being described. Okay, and if you wish, you could graph that one as well.